Hello everyone and welcome back to .NET Core Central. Today I'm going to discuss about the AI agent framework semantic kernel. In my last video, I discussed about what are agents and today it is time to show an agent working using semantic kernel. Semantic kernel is the only framework which provides out-of-box .NET support. Apart from semantic kernel, there is another framework which is called Autogen, which is also built by Microsoft Research. But semantic kernel is more geared towards enterprise. So let's start with what is the package that we'll need for using semantic kernel. And the only package that we have to add is microsoft.semantic-kernel. And then semantic-kernel is going to internally add Azure OpenAI and Azure Core, which are needed. And then it will add the microsoft.extension.ai namespaces. So let's start. The main namespaces that we would need to add are microsoft.semantic-kernel, which is the core namespace, microsoft.semantic-kernel.chat completion, which is used for executing the chat model, and then microsoft.semantic-kernel.connectors.openai. OpenAI is the connector that I am using. It has other connectors that can be used apart from OpenAI as well. Next, I have declared three variables. The model ID is the model that I'm going to use. The endpoint, which is the endpoint and the API key. Now I'm using the OpenAI endpoint as well as OpenAI API key. If you are using other model provider, you can use those. But in that case, you also have to use different namespaces. The first line here is using the kernel, which is the semantic kernel class, and then create builder and add Azure OpenAI chat completion. And I'm passing the model ID endpoint and API key here. And this will return a I kernel builder, which is then is going to be used for everything. So instead of using standard builder, here we are using a builder provided by semantic kernel itself and everything that we are going to do for example things like dependency injection will be using this builder next what i am doing is i am adding the logging into the builder which is the kernel builder and i am using the console logging so that everything is logged into the console and then i'm finally doing the build which is returning the builder.build will return the kernel object itself. And then I can use things like get required service. And here I'm using the get required service to get an object of I completion service, or I chat completion service, which is what I'm going to use to execute the chat. Next, I am adding plugins. And here, the plugins is, the kernel object has a plugins collection to which I can add plugins. And for adding plugins, I am using the add from type where I'm passing the type. Now question, what are plugins? In general AI language, plugins are called tools or what is known as tools in general AI language is called plugins in semantic kernel. So plugins provides AI the ability to run code, to retrieve information, or execute some sort of command. So as I mentioned in my last video, plugins are or tools are nothing but a piece of C sharp code that is executed by a agentic framework. And the agentic framework uses the natural language model to determine which method of the 
tools to be cooked. So let's go through this tool and then I'll explain how it really works. So here in tools, these are standard stuff. We, cre we created a array of light model where we define different states. The, the ID of the light, uh, the name of the light, and then what is the state, whether it's on or not on. And this is what is important. These are the two functions we define, which can be called by the framework using agent. So the function has a name of the function. So you can see here kernel function attribute. This basically has to be used or included for every function for it to execute properly. And the function name is get underscore light. And the description is the most important part. It provides a definition of what this function is doing. And this is what will be used by the AI model to understand whether this should be called or something else should be called based on the user query. So here we are saying get a list of lights and their current state. And all it does it, it returns this object. And the next the other function is change state. As the name suggested, it changes the state of the light. And the name of the function is change state. Now this one takes a couple of parameter, an int and a bool is on. And then it finds out what ID of the light and based on the value passed, it sets the value of the is on here. That's all it does and this is the light model. Now the way it works is, and this is where the magic happens. When the user asks a question, the framework uses the questions and then along with the question, it passes all the tool definitions to the model. When it passes the tool definition, it passes the name of the function, the description, and any parameter it has. And then it asks, based on the user question, determine what tool should be called. And along with the tool, if a tool should be called, then for that tool, what are the parameters that needs to be passed? And for the user question, find out the parameters. Sometimes it is based on the user question. Sometimes it's based on a previous tool response. But all this data is essentially sent to the model. Then the model determines based on all the data what to do. And then it returns it back to the framework. And the framework then takes that data, usually it asks model to return the data in a JSON format, and then it takes that JSON format, understand what tools to be executed, and essentially it does some sort of switch case or if else to execute a tool or a plugin in the language of semantic kernel. So that's the magic that semantic kernel framework or framework like semantic kernel does behind the scene. So that's what we have done. First we have defined or we added the lights plugin to the semantic kernel. Then I created another plugin called weather plugin into semantic kernel. And weather plugin just again defines a weather model, defines different city and the temperature and the condition has a method. This is a get only method which takes the name of the city and then returns the weather of the city. After that, we defined a execution setting and we have said the function behavior is auto. So what, is, what does that mean? Execution setting tells whether the framework here, semantic kernel framework here, should go and automatically execute the function or not. So function calling which is again a native feature provided by most of the LLM planning. With function calling, as I mentioned earlier, LLM can request a particular function to satisfy the user's ask. To enable automatic function calling, we need to set this particular function behavior to auto. Apart from auto, there are a couple of other 
options here. So auto, as you see, it provides either all condensed plugin functions to the AI model to call or satisfied one. None means none of the function will be sent to the model, in which case your model will be just a standard or your agent cannot do anything technically. It will just answer based on what model knows. To give it more knowledge than what models you have, you have to set the function choice behavior, either auto or something else. And the last one is required. And I have never used required, so, but the required, the behavior, this behavior forces the model to call the provided functions. So semantic connectors will invoke a requested function or multiple requested function if model request multiple functions for the following request to prevent the model from repeatedly calling the same function. Whereas in auto, this behavior allows model to decide whether to call the function and if so, which one to call. I'm going to go with auto, keep it as that. And the third one, which is extremely important, which is called chat history. Chat history, and I'm going to show why chat history is important when I run the application. The chat history is going to keep a history of all the chat inside of this uh, loop that I created. And this loop is essentially the user is just asking a question. We're adding the user input to the user message. And then we are making a call to get chat message content using the chat completion service. If you remember, we got the chat completion service from the required service. This is something the kernel automatically adds based on this extension method. This internally sets everything up for us. And then to the get chat message, we are sending the history to this history. The settings, which where we say that, you know, automatically call the function and the kernel itself, which is this kernel. And here we are adding the plugins. So the plugins will be accessible to the framework at that point. And then we are just adding the result into the console. And then finally, we add the message. We add the result.role, which is going to be agent here. The role will be agent. Here we are adding add user, which in which case the add user method, in which case role is the user. Here the role will be of the result will be essentially agent. And then whatever result content of the result, we are adding that. And this will add to the history and whatever we are adding to history, all these messages will also be passed back to the model every time we make a question and that will give the context of the entire conversation to the agent for it to be intelligent. That is why history is so important. And then we are just running it in a while. So now let me run this application and show how it works. So first what I'm going to do is, I'm going to ask what is the weather? And since the model doesn't know, or the framework also doesn't know yet where I'm from, it's not going to be able to answer that. So if I ask it, as you can see, could you please specify the city? So here, some of the things is important to understand. You can see here, it is sending the functions, the get lights, change light, and get weather. And here, if you see that, it says role is user, and what is the user, what is the weather, and few other attributes in the log. So now I'm going to say, I am from New York, but I'm not going to ask about the weather. I'm going to say, what is the status of all the lights? And if I ask that, now it is coming back and you can see here, it says, as for the status of lights, you have off, off and on. 
it also comes back with the weather. You can see it started with the current weather in New York is 22 degrees centigrade and sunny. Even though I did not ask the question because in my history, I have what is the weather and then I'm saying I'm from New York. It is taking my history and executing the previous questions also. And how does it do that? So let's go through the all the logs right now. So first it starts with role user. What is the weather? Then you can see again, uh, role is assistant and the content is, could you please specify the city, which is the previous answer. Then it added role is user. And then it added the question I'm asking, I'm from New York, what is the status of the light? And then the setting function, it is passing everything. So as you can see, it sent the entire history or, or the entire history is recorded here, which will be sent back to the model. And then here, it comes here, it says, it is function call it is making is get weather. And then it is calling the get light because it is finding the light and this one, right? And then it comes back and it says function get weather, city is New York, that's how it is calling. And then it is calling the, it is showing that get weather is succeeded. And this is the response from the weather. Similarly, it is calling the get lights. And this is the response from the get lights. And then finally, it converts the JSON response into a natural language here. And this is all done by the, between the combination of the framework and the model. Now you can write your own framework to do all of this. But semantic kernel does provide everything. So why, you know, waste time on building a framework? Let's just use something which is matured enough and built by so many developers as it is open source. Now next what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask it to switch on the table lamp. Can you switch on the table lamp? And here it says the table lamp has been successfully switched off. And you can see the call has been made here. Light change state result is ID is one, table lamp is on true, which is what we are passing and it's been completed. Now let's ask again, what is the status of all my lights? and let it make a function call. And here now, as you can see, it's not talking about weather again because it already answered weather. Now it is picking up the latest one and says, here is the current status of all your lights. Table lamp is now on, it was off before, and then the rest of them. As you can see, this is fairly standard code. I have not done much of change from what is provided by semantic kernel example. I just added the weather plugin. And as you can see, it is fairly easy and simple to create a chat agent. But chat agent is not the only agent that you will end up building. Uh, in an enterprise situation, there are a lot of other type of agents that needs to be built. So in my next example, I'm going to try to build a little bit more realistic agent, which is not just for chat, and try to decompose how to build one of them. So that is all I wanted to cover in today's video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to this channel and you think you are getting value out of this channel, please subscribe to my channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.